What's going on you guys, Frost here, and I'm back with another guide. This time I'll be telling you guys how I play Mastery Jungle. If you find this guide helpful in any way, please do remember to click that like button, as this will help me get this guide out there to more people. Also, if anything changes that will affect this guide in any way, there will be an update in the description. The following subjects will be mentioned in this guide. Champion Description Abilities, leveling order, runes, masteries, the item build, and the jungle strategy. If you want to go to a specific subject, you can click on it right now. Champion Description Master Yi is a very farm heavy type of jungler that scales up really nicely. He is also very good at split pushing because of his passive and the fact that he can 1v1 pretty much anyone. Also, he can use his W to cut down massive amounts of incoming damage from the enemy team, so it's quite hard to focus him down unless you can stun lock him. Overall, if you like a farm heavy fast type of jungle style with great late game potential, Master Yi is definitely the champion for you. Master Yi's abilities, his passive, double strike. After landing three basic attacks, Master Yi's next basic attack within four seconds strikes twice, dealing 50% AD physical damage which applies on hit effects and can critical strike. Also, Master Yi's dance speed increases with his movement speed, which is fun to use as a taunt. This is a very straightforward passive, it just gives you an extra auto attack for free every 4 auto attacks. His first ability, Alpha Strike. Master Yi blinks to the target enemy and up to 3 consecutive nearest enemies, becoming untargetable in the process, dealing physical damage to each one of them, increased against minions and monsters, and reappears next to his primary target. Alpha Strike can critical strike, dealing 60% AD physical damage to all enemies hit. Modified by bonus critical damage. Basic attacks reduce Alpha Strike's cooldown by 1 second. This is a very good ability to clear a jungle with, as with a few levels into this skill it will start one-shotting your camps. Also it's very good if you're going for a more crit heavy build because this skill will give you insane burst without being able to get hit yourself. His second ability, Meditate. Master Yi channels for up to 4 seconds, healing himself each second for amount increased by 1% for every 1% of missing health. While channeling, Master Yi reduces incoming damage, half against turrets. This skill is great for sustaining in your jungle and also to get a lot of health back in teamfights by simply going to the side when you get low and using this ability to get pretty much half your health back. Also the damage reduction can be used very nicely to block a massive amount of incoming damage because at a max rank this damage reduction goes up to 70%. His third ability, Wuju Style. Passively Master Yi gains 10% AD as bonus attack damage while Wuju Style is not on cooldown. Upon activating this ability, Master Yi's basic attacks deal bonus true damage for 5 seconds. This skill is very straightforward you get an extra damage when it's not on cooldown and you gain true damage when you use this ability. This true damage gets doubled by both the fourth attack and the stated devourer, meaning that you will thread through pretty much any enemy champion very quickly. His fourth ability, Highlander. Passively champion takedowns reduce the current cooldown of Master Yi's basic abilities by 70%. Upon activating, Master Yi will gain bonus attack speed, multiplies his movement speed and becomes immune to all slows for 10 seconds. While active, champion takedowns extend the duration of Highlander by 4 seconds. This cooldown reduction helps you out a lot in getting your abilities back faster, especially when you combine it with your 40% cooldown reduction yourself. It will basically mean little to no cooldown on all of your abilities. And the active is great for a lot of different things. You can use it to escape from people or chase someone down. You can also use it to push turrets or get other objectives like Baron and Dragon faster. Basically, don't be conservative with this ability, as it has fairly low cooldown already, and you will have it back fast. Leveling these abilities. On level 1, I take my Q, simply because it is the main damage skill Master Yi has to clear his jungle. Then on level 2, I take my W, to instantly start sustaining in my jungle, and try to save as many health potions as possible. And then on level 3, I'll actually take another point into my Q, simply because the more points you put into your Q, the faster your jungle clear will be early on. And then on level 4 I'll take a point into my E to get that extra damage, as well as the true damage active of course. As far as maxing goes, I'll max my Q first, simply because this is your main damaging skill when it comes to clearing your jungle, and it will also help you greatly in early skirmishes. Then I'll max my E second for the higher true damage, and once you get your stated devourer, this damage will become doubled. And finally I'll max my W last, because all you really need is one point into it early, to be able to sustain off it properly, as it scales with missing health. But of course you level your ult whenever possible. The runes. I take 9 flat AD marks, 9 scaling armor seals, 9 scaling cooldown reduction glyphs and 3 attack speed quints. I take the flat AD marks because this offers me the right amount of damage increase to be able to get through the early clear quite efficiently. Then I take 9 scaling armor seals because as master you will actually have plenty of clear speed and sustain so you don't need to go for the flat armor seals. You might as well go with the scaling ones. Of course if you don't have scaling armor seals the flat ones will do the trick as well. 
Then I take 9 scaling CDR glyphs to allow me to get the maximum of 40% CDR in the later stages of the game. This pretty much means that your ult has little to no cooldown and this is very nice for obvious reasons. And finally I take 3 attack speed quints for the same reason I take the 80 marks, a better clear time in the earlier game. The Masteries. I go for 18.66 on Master Yi. In the Ferocity Tree, I take the attack speed increase over the spell damage because most of Master Yi's damage is from his auto attacks. Then I take the increased damage, armor pen, plus some sustain into Fervor of Battle. You get Fervor of Battle on Master Yi because he is auto attack based and the more damage you get each auto attack, the better. Also, it stacks quite quick with the stated devour and it will hurt a lot. Then I take the increased damage to minions and monsters and assassination for better 1v1 potential when you're split pushing later in the game. And I take 6 points into the resolve free for some extra health sustain and mainly the movement speed increase. The item build. I have two different item builds for Master Yi. Build 1 is a build that will skill better with the game and build 2 is more of a fast damage build. Personally I don't really like the second build all that much because it doesn't skill as well as the first build does. But also the first build makes you way tankier than the second build. Anyway, let's get on with the first build. To start off, you want to buy yourself a Huntress Machete and 3 health potions. The reason I do this is because I run scaling armor in my runes, so you need the extra health those health potions offer you instead of the refillable potion. But if you run flat armor, you can also start with the refillable potion. After your first clear, you want to go back and buy the skirmisher upgrade to your jungle item and a refillable potion if you didn't start with one. Now at this stage, you just want to make sure you get the Devourer enchant as fast as you possibly can. After that, I generally like to get Ninja Tabis because this will make you very tanky and I feel like the other boots don't really help you that much. After Ninja Tabis, you want to start building into your Blade of the Rune King. Combining this item with Devourer will result in a massive amount of damage. Then to further increase this damage, you should get a Black Cleaver. This item will offer you the best amount of armor pen in the game, plus a lot of CDR and health. Now, at this stage, you need to make sure you get a bit more tanky, but your focus is to be very mobile at the same time, so you want to get a Deadman's Plate. And to finish this build off, you want to get yourself a Titanic Hydra. You get this because with this build, you stack quite a lot of health, so it gives your Titanic Hydra a solid amount of damage. Plus, the passive from this item works with the State of Devourer. Now, for the second build, let's call this one the Rage Blade variant. I personally don't really like this build because you will only start to get tanky very late in your item build. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of Rage Blade on Master Yi, but I know that some people are, so I will include it. Anyway, you want to start off the exact same way, but after your Ninja Tabbies, you want to get a Rage Blade first instead of a Blade of the Rune King. After Rage Blade, you want to still get your Blade of the Rune King simply because the damage you get from this item is too good. Now, with these two items and a State of Devourer, you will have quite a lot of hybrid damage and you are very squishy, so you need to get some tank items. The best way to build for tank items with this is going for Deadmans and Sterics. This will offer you mobility, health, armor and you cannot get one shot. And with the lifesteal from Rageblade and Blade of the Rune King combined, you will have enough to stay at full health pretty much all the time. The jungle routes. In the background right now you can see the jungle clears for both sides of the map. Whilst this is playing I want to talk to you guys a bit about team fighting with Master Yi. Also, I get quite low in some situations since I use scaling armor seals. All this aside, team fighting is probably the hardest part about him. What you need to do is wait for the team to kind of split so you can never actually be the engager when it comes to straight 5v1 situations, even for a short period of time, because you will get focused down. Instead, you want to try to be split pushing most of the time, since this is an ideal situation for you because you are able to win 2v1s and even 3v1s if you're far enough ahead. You can of course stay with your team, but then your goal is to stay back more and actually wait for your team to engage and then try to pick up the enemy carries one by one. Also when it comes to split pushing, don't be afraid to just use your ultimate to get the turret faster, since with the amount of CDR you build, it's gonna be up very quickly. And you clearing a turret in like 5 seconds can be very surprising to a team, and will generally result in you getting more turrets because they cannot react properly. But if they do send people to go deal with you, you can just use the remaining time of your ultimate to sprint away from any situation. And as a final tip, with any kind of devourer or jungler, do dragon as soon as you get the devourer enchant to stack it up as fast as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it or learned anything from it, please do remember to click that like button right below this video as this helps me get this video out there. If you would like to see more guides like this, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!